Well, sa buong buwan ng Marso, uh, we've been working our way together, as I say, through this series, uh, this sermon series, uh, ang mga larawan ng simbahan o ang mga uh, pictures of the church. At uh, malinaw na nating nakikita ito habang inahahanda natin ang ating sarili para sa uh, April 20 na ang iglesia ay hindi isang uh, social club or uh, religious invention, ngunit ito ay ang design ng Diyos. Ito ay ang invention ni Kristo. Ang iglesia dito sa lupa ay, ay both established at ito ay governed ng kaharian ng langit. And that has been uh, the focus of the f- past four weeks. At therefore, kapag pinag-uusapan natin ang tungkol sa formal na uh, constituting sa isang sa, sa aming iglesia, kapag tinitingnan natin ang ating sarili bilang mga miyembro ng local na fellowship, we're not talking about uh, isang bagay na kaswal or mababaw or hindi gaanong mahalaga. But when we speak of the church, we speak of something vitally important. Hindi ka basta-basta pumapasok at lumalabas sa pagiging miyembro ng simbahan, depende sa nararamdaman ninyo. Hindi rin tayo basta-basta ibibigay ang resignation as soon as we encounter problems and difficulties within the church. This is why we want to make a, a clear distinction within this fellowship that we have a covenant church membership. In other words, we do not have a membership where you just sign up and then you just resign when you feel like it. But my firm commitment, that sincere resolution sa harap ng presensya ng Diyos, that you will strive faithfully to submit to the ministry and you will serve fervently the mission of Christ in this local church. And uh, over this month, we've observed kung paano ng Biblia ay puno ng masaganang metapora or, or metaphor upang i-describe ang work that we are seeking to establish in, in, in Sapuno. Uh, he is the true vine. At tayo ay ang, uh, tayo ang simbahan ay ang mga sanga, malalim na nakaugat at mahigpit na konektado sa kanya. Itinuran sa atin na habang tayo ay isang diverse grupo ng maraming miyembro at iba Ibat ibang mga regalo, ang iglesia ay iisang at single at nakakaisang katawan na nagtutulungan. And then last week, uh, you remember, we had a, a dear brother preaching to us at ipinaliwanag sa atin lahat na para tayong isang building. Bawat isa sa atin ay mga buhay na bato, living stones na itinayo sa isang spiritual na templo, isang tahanan para sa Diyos. Pero ngayong gabi, uh, having seen the church identified for us as a branch and as a body and as a building, uh, ngayon ay tinitingnan natin ang pinakakilala at mahalagang larawan Sa lahat. Ito ay ang relasyon ni Kristo, the bridegroom, and the church as his bride. Ito ang nababasa natin dito sa uh, Efeso chapter 5. Uh, quite clearly, we are a picture in the church, yes, of a husband and a wife, but more so of the bride, namely the, ch- the, the church, that is us, and the bridegroom, that is the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. At ngayon sa inyo na uh, happily married, uh, ngayong hapon ay may nalalaman tungkol sa mga blessings at sweetness that comes through your commitment to the wedding vows that you made to your wife or to your husband on your marriage ceremony. Whenever we speak about uh, a wedding or a bride, or any time I attend uh, a wedding ceremony, I'm always reminded of my own personal wedding vows that I made to my wife nine years ago. 
And so it is for all of us. As we come to think about the church, mga kaibigan, kahit na ang pinakamatatag at romantikong relasyon ay isang maputlang pagmumuni-muni ng pag na umiiral sa pagitan ni Kristo. Si Kristo ay ang ultimate bridegroom at ang church, ang, ang iglesia. We are collectively His bride. Well, sa liwanag nito, I want us to focus our attention uh, on Ephesians chapter 5, but particularly on verses 25 to 27. Dahil dito sa tatlong verses na ito, natuklasan natin na ang kasal mismo sa pagitan ng isang lalaki at isang babae ay nilika upang maging isang physical na paglalarawan pointing us upward sa isang espin Heso Kristo sa kanyang bride, ang iglesia. And it's this beautiful description that the Apostle Paul has provided for us as he looks down upon the temporal relationships that we share together on earth He is ultimately casting our minds upwards so that we might see the Lord Jesus Christ and His relationship with us as the church. And uh, some of you children, I've printed out a, a worksheet again for you, so you might want to uh, fill out uh, the main points for the sermon and uh, maybe that tick box as well. And and so this is the outline. Tingnan natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin nito under four main headings. Una, a peculiar selection. Ikatlo, a process of sanctification. And then fourthly and finally, a perfect celebration. So four points tonight, uh, one more than the usual number, uh, but I hope that you might be blessed as we come to look at what it means for the church to be the bride of Jesus Christ. So unang una, tumingin tayo sa verse 25. Verse 25, we find a peculiar selection. Now, that word peculiar means uh, something unexpected or something strange. At nababasa natin ito, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And all the ladies said, Amen, and the men said, Ouch. Tama ba yun? Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. The church. Uh, maraming magagandang kwento ang mababasa mo sa isang uh, mabait at mayamang uh, prince na nakasal sa isang mahirap, uh, mahirap na dalaga. May mga fictional fairy tales at mga real-life accounts ng isang uh, common girl who goes from rags to riches. Okay, she was living on the streets, but now she's living in a palace. At hindi ito dahil nagsumikap siya o dahil nakipon siya, kundi dahil umibig siya sa isang mayamang prinsipe. At gayon pa man, wala sa mga kwentong ito ang kasing dakila ng Ebanghelyo sa, sa buhay ng mga mahihirap at nangangailangan, makasalanan. Wala nang mas maluwalhati sa buong mundo kaysa kapag ang prinsipe ng langit The Lord Jesus Christ ay humawag sa kamay ng mga makalupang nilalang. There's nothing more glorious in all of this universe than when the Prince of Heaven, described as the, the Prince of Peace, takes the hand of his earthly creatures. Uh, Disney cannot think up a more beautiful narrative than we read in our Bibles. The gospel details for us a love that is not based upon fleeting, fickle emotions. But as I've said already, this is a peculiar selection. But what do we mean by this phrase, peculiar selection? Well, very simply, God's love is not a fleeting emotion, but it is an eternal choice. Now, we are very uh, shaped, aren't we, by the Hollywood movies and by the Philippine teledrama where we find love displayed for us on the big screen. And what do we find? Well, we find butterflies in the stomach. We find passion. We find romantic feelings, that kilig factor. But when we look at the love of Christ towards His church, we're not thinking of some fleeting emotion. But we find this eternal 
daily choice to love His people. Maaring matandaan ng ilan sa inyo mula sa aming mga pag-aaral sa Biblia noong Thursday ng gabi na paminsan-minsan ay ginagamit namin ang, ang term unconditional election. Or uh, sometimes it's referred to, probably more helpfully, as God's sovereign choice. Or uh, maybe you prefer to refer to it as uh, divine for ordination whatever your theological terminology the reality is that the bible speaks of god choosing to save sinners at nakilala natin ang biblical na position ng pagibig ng diyos sa mga what na doktrina ng pelagianism you see long ago a man named pelagius ang nagsimulang magturo na para sa atin na maattain ang salvation And then there were others, uh, they said, well, I think Pelagius has gone a little bit too far. And so they met him halfway, and we call them semi-Pelagians. And uh, I can't tell you how many uh, semi-Pelagian churches I've been to, where they basically say, no, we believe that, that God's love and his grace is necessary for our salvation. But ultimately, uh, we have ang ating mga Biblia, at nakakita natin ang ibang mensahe. But first John chapter four verse ten is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Sa katunayan dito mismo sa ating text ngayong gabi sa Ephesians five twenty five. Bago pa minahal ng iglesia si Kristo, minahal na si Kristo ang some uh, exchange where, where we make our best efforts and Jesus says, I'll meet you in the middle. No, tayo ay nakitipon dito ngayon bilang mga naligtas na makasalanan dahil lamang sa pag-ibig ni Jesus. Ipinagmamalaki natin si Kristo lamang. Though we were Dead in our sin, as we find in Ephesians chapter 2, just three chapters before our passage, though we were dead, though we were ruined by the fall, though we had, had drowned in our sin, God sovereignly jumped into the water and he elected to make us alive together with Christ. And when you are very honest with yourself this evening, you say that is a peculiar selection. When you look in the mirror and you see the kind of man or the kind of woman that you are by nature and by practice, you say that's a very peculiar selection that God in his holiness would take notice of me, a poor, blind, simple beggar on the streets, as it were, spiritually. Nothing to contribute except the sin that makes my salvation necessary. And why is this a peculiar selection, not just for you, but for any but saved sinner? Well, sapakat kapag nakita natin ang ating sarili kung sino talaga tayo, poor and wretched, weak and wounded, sick and sore, sasabihin natin, bakit ako? I know not why God's wondrous grace to me has been made known nor why unworthy as I am, he made me for his own. That's the, the hymn writer, but it's the declaration of the church of Christ. That we are with Hindi lang ako undeserving or ill-deserving, but hell-deserving. Oh, that is so contrary, isn't it, to the ways of the world's to the philosophy of the modern age, because you see, the world's love is always object-oriented. What do I mean by that? Well, we love because we find someone physically attractive, or we love because they have a charming personality. Sa madaling salita, mahal natin ang mga itinuturing natin, karapat-dapat na mahalin. At iyan ang dahilan kung bakit napakaraming relasyon ng taong iyon o uh, sorry uh, mar, napakaraming relasyon ang nasisira ngayon. We see the the big problem in the west of divorce and then we look here in the Philippines and we say okay there may not be divorce but there are many broken marriages. 
There are many other avenues that you can take in order to break down the relationship. And it's just a plague, isn't it? Dahil sa sandaling mawala ang pagiging kaakit-akit ng taong iyon o nagsimula silang magpakita ng pangit na bahagi sa kanilang pag-uugali, ang pagibig ay agad na nawawala at ang pagsasama ay nasira. And yet, subalit ang pagibig ng Diyos ay hindi ganun. The love of Christ for His church. Ito ay hindi isang biglaang pagnanasa, ngunit isang pagpapasa, pagpapasya mula sa kawalang hanggang. Inilagay ni Kristo ang kanyang pagibig sa kanyang iglesia kahit noong tayo ay makasalanan pa. Bagamat walang kagandahang makikita, pinili niya tayong tubusin upang maging kanyang pride. Ang pagibig na ito ay nakihigit sa kaalaman. Hindi natin masusukat kung gaano kahaba, gaano ka- kalawa, gaano kataas, gaano kalalim ang pagibig ni Kristo. We say along with the writers of the New Testament, Why me, this great and holy God, and this poor and sinful wretch, why would a God like that save a sinner like me? What great love we see in the Bible at large, but most especially as we come to this text, the first part of verse 25. Just as Christ loved the church. Ay isa sa mga paborito kong salaysay sa Biblia na matatagpuan sa aklat ng Hosea sa lumang tipan. Nariyan ang banal na propetang ito at Mysteriously, sinabi sa kanya ng Diyos na pumunta at pakasalan ang isang hindi tapat na prostitute na si Gomer upang ipakita sa bansang Israel ang unconditional na pagibig ng Diyos sa kanila bilang kanyang spiritual na adulteress ng mga tao. Ngunit kahit na si Hosea ang pinakatakilang uh, makasintahan, iniwan siya ng kanyang asawa, tumakas at ibinigay ang sarili sa ibang mga maniligaw. Well, inevitably, it doesn't take long if you know that story before Gomer uh, finds herself at the slave market. And she's stripped of her clothes and she's being sold like an animal to the highest bidder. Kaya ano, ang, ano na ang gagawin ni Hosea? Does he say, well, I gave you one chance and you failed. And I give up on you now. No, binibilin, binibilin niya muli ang kanyang pride. He redeems her from slavery. He cleans her up. And in this unexplainable turn of events, binibigyan niya siya ng isa pang pakakataon na maging kanyang pride. At mga kaibigan, yan ang nakikita natin dito sa Ephesians 5.25. Si Heso Kristo ang pinakatakilang nagmamahal sa lahat ay nagpasya mula sa kawalang hanggan na mahalin ang kanyang iglesia. Kahit na tayo ay hindi tapat at madume. Even though we are so filled with, with sinful ways and sinful thoughts, Jesus Christ, like that noble prophet Hosea, comes down into this world and he buys back that which was already his. The ones who he had created, he redeems them from the sin that they have committed. Even before the foundations of the world, the Lord set his love upon us as his people. And though we like Gomer, we run away, we leave the Lord, we run from his presence, we constantly give our love to the other things of this wicked world. Christ has peculiarly selected us. Mga kaibigan, ang Ebanghelyo ay ang pinakatakilang kwento ng pagibig sa lahat ng panahon. Sapagkat sinasabi nito sa atin na bago nagsimula ang panahon ng Diyos Ama, Diyos Anak at Diyos Espiritu Santo ay iginuhit ang kontrata ng biyaya ng kasal na ito that Jesus Christ would come and He would redeem innumerable 
unusual and unlovable sinners like us to be his bride. It's the glory of the gospel. It's what we see in the final pages of the Bible in Revelation. Si Jesus ay hindi lamang inalalarawan bilang ang bride, bridegroom, kundi bilang ang cordero. He's described as the lamb. At sa Kabanata 21 verse 9, sinabi ng anghel, speaking of the church, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. So for anyone who would like to argue with the concept of the church being the bride, it's so clearly laid out there in Revelation 21 verse 9. The Lamb is Christ and the wife is the church. And we cannot fully understand, can we, why he does. Hindi natin lubos na mauunawaan kung bakit niya ginagawa. Ngunit sinasamba ni Kristo ang kanyang bride. Inaalagaan niya ito. Inaalay niya ang kanyang sarili sa kanya. Ipinangako niya ang kanyang walang hanggang pagmamahal sa kanya. Siya ay naging isang laman. Sakanya, he becomes one flesh, as all marriages are pictured to be. And so sa katunayan, ang term ginamit upang ilarawan ang kanyang pagibig dito sa verse 25 ay ang Greek na salitang agape. Uh, this is the uh, love that does not seek its own pleasure, but a love that is unselfishly concerned for the benefit of the one who is being loved. Ang ilan sa inyo ay naalala ng maputi kung paano mo nakilala ang mahal mo. At pagkaraan ng ilang oras, lumuod ang lalaki at nagpropose siya sa babae. At pagkatapos ay nagplano at nagkahanda ka at inalis ang laman ng iyong bank account para i-fund ang pinakamaganda at pinakamasayang araw ng iyong buhay. At sa araw na iyon, on the wedding day itself, tumayo ka sa, harap ng, sa harapan ng Diyos at nakatingin sa mga mata ng taong mahal mo, sinabi mo, I take you. For better or for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, to love and to cherish, till death us do part. It's a, it's a very serious covenant that you make on that wedding day. Pero hindi iyon basta emotion. Ngunit iyon ay isang pagpipilian. That was a choice that you made. To your husband, 25 reminds you that your love cannot compare to the choice of Christ to love the church. It's a peculiar choice. Ngunit, pangalawa, tingnan ang susunod na bahagi ng verse 25 at a priceless salvation. A priceless salvation. Hindi lamang ipinapahayag ang kanyang pagibig sa mga salita, ngunit ipinapakita niya ang kanyang pagibig sa gawa. Husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And what did he do? And gave himself up for her. Kahapon ang, kahapon ang, ang date ay March 16. Uh, we write it as three. 16, and so I mentioned that it is sometimes referred to as a, a John 3, 16 day. Uh, marahil ay nakita mo ang talatang iyon nang pumasok ka sa itim na uh, pintuan sa simbahang ngayong gabi. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him shall not perish, but have eternal Lie. Ito ay hindi lamang ang pinak pinakatanyag na talata sa Biblia, ngunit ito ang puso ng mensahe ng Ebanghelyo. Ang Diyos ay hindi lamang may pag-ibig sa kanyang puso, ngunit pinatunayan niya ito sa pamamagitan ng pagpapadala ng kanyang kaisa-isang anak upang ipinanganak sa sapsaban at mamatay sa cross upang maging tagapagligtas para sa mga makasalanan. As one hymn writer famously put it, Samuel Stone, he said, From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride, and with his own blood he bought her 
and for her life he died. Tulad ng Hosea, sa slave market, nagbabayad ng halaga para tubusin ang pag-aari na niya. Bumaba si Jesus sa mundong ito na may sakit sa kasalanan at nabuhay siya sa buhay na hindi sana natin magbuhay at namatay. Siya sa, sa kamatayan na nararapat sa atin upang bayaran ang halaga para sa isang tao na pag-aari na niya. Binili niya muli ang kanyang bride. And I wonder, friends, when you, when you hear that message that you have heard time and time again from this pulpit here in Grace Plant Santa Maria, I wonder kung ikaw ay naging sobrang pamilya sa mensahe ng Evangelio that your heart just grows cold to the wonder of it. Uh, last Thursday night, when we were looking at our family covenant, I told you the story of when my wife and I went to the city of Paris in France, and we saw the Eiffel Tower, and our breath was taken away. It was an amazing thing to see. But then there were the people who were working there day in, day out, and I said to them, do you find it impressive? And they said, not anymore. I've seen it a million times. My heart has grown accustomed to its beauty, and the wonder is gone. And I said to you, friends, on Thursday night, but I say it to you again today. May our hearts never grow cold to the wonder of the gospel. May we never look at Jesus Christ and just shrug our shoulders and say, well, yes, I've heard it all before. Mga kaibigan, habang pinabasa natin sa unang Pedro 1.18, you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold but with the precious blood of Christ. And at this time of year, as, as Easter is approaching, maraming taong ang nag-iisip tungkol sa cross. Ngunit bilang iglesia, hindi lamang tayo namamangha sa makasasayang realidad ng naganap, kundi sa karanasang katotohanan na ang halaga ng cross ay para iligtas ang isang taong katulad natin. Ito ay isang walang katumbas na kaligtasan. Ang ating mga kasalanan ay parang isang bundok ng utang na hinding hindi natin mababayaran. Gayon paman, ang pagibig ng bridegroom ay pumipigil sa kanya na hindi lamang maawain na alisin ang utang ng kasalanan, kundi pati na rin ilagay ang kayamanan sa ating account sa pamamagitan ng Biyaya. In other words, His mercy does not just remove the punishment that we deserve, but in grace He gives us the gift that we do not deserve. We love Christ, don't we? We love the Lord Jesus Christ, but we only love Him because He first loved us. Siya lamang ang ating minimahal dahil siya ang unang umibig sa atin. At dahil siya ay nag-aalay ng kanyang buhay para sa atin sa cross, tingnan natin ang verse 25 dito sa Efeso 5. He gave himself up for us. Tingnan natin ang verse 25. Sabi ni Pablo, mga asawang lalaki, ibigin, ibigin ninyo ng ganyan ang inyong mga asawa. Palagi akong nagtataka kung bakit ang mundo ay labis na nasasaktan sa idea na ang mga asawang babae ay dapat magpasakop sa kanilang mga asawa. Wives, submit to your husbands. Uh, and people get really bothered by that. And you know that, don't you? And maybe it even bothers you tonight when you read a verse like this. Pero kung ang mas malaking pagkabigla ay ang mga asawang lalaki, ay dapat na mahalin ang kanilang mga asawa tulad ng pagibig ni Kristo at ibinigay ang kanyang sarili para sa simbahan. This is an impossible standard to measure up to. And yet daily, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we as husbands are to love our wives in this way. We are to strive as we look at the gospel to say, I will sacrifice myself for the benefit of my bride. And I want to encourage you husbands, don't be, uh, we say in the UK, don't be too cool for school, right? 
don't 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 be so uh, so manly and masculine that you never show your love to your wife. Well, because we're just wired differently. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Manga ka ibigan, may God help us not only to admire. The priceless salvation that Christ has achieved for us as the church's bride. But let us conduct ourselves and our relationships in light of that great cost. Uh, the preacher and the pastor, Paul Washer, uh, actually, I don't think he is a pastor, but he's a, a well known preacher. I'm sure you've heard of him. He tells the story ng isang dakilang hari na nagpunta sa malayo at ipinakatiwala ang kanyang pinakamamahal sa kasintahang babae sa kanyang mga lingkod na malinaw na nagutos sa kanila sa pamamagitan ng pagsusulat ng lahat ng mga paraan na dapat nilang pangala pangalagaan ang kanyang magandang bride at panatilihin ito. Ngunit, uh, it, ito dalisay, right? Sorry, I'm getting lost in my notes there. But he's given them this instruction. He's written it down, protect and uh, keep the purity of uh, of my bride. Ngunit, after some time, uh, nakalimutan ng mga tao sa bayan ang lahat tungkol sa hari na umalis. Iniisip pa nga ng ilan na siya ay patay na at kaya nawawalan sila ng respeto sa uh, bride niya. At kaya ang mga tagapaglingkod ay ang uh, ay kumbinsido na ang pinakamahusay na paraan upang maibalik ang pag-ibig para sa hari ay upang bihisan ang kanyang bride sa sa ibang paraan. Binabaliwala nila ang mga rules na isinulat ng hari at sinumulan nilang bihisan ang kanyang asawa upang magmukang sensual. At ipinarada nila siya sa buong bayan upang bumalik ang hari. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, upang maakit ang attention ng mga tao. And so as they see this woman, they, they begin to say, well actually maybe we will serve the king. After all, seeing as he has such a beautiful bride, ngunit pagkatapos ay bumalik ang hari at nang matakpuan niya ang kanyang tearful, degraded wife sa matinding galit, pinarusahan niya ang kanyang mga alipin at pinapatay sila. And what is this tragic story all about? Well, ito ay isang larawan ni Yesu Kristo na hari na nagmamahal sa kanyang bride. At nang siya ay umakyat sa langit na may pangakong babalik, iniwan niya ang kanyang nakasulat na salita sa mga pastor at mga ngaral. Ngunit ano ang nakikita natin sa napakaraming iglesia sa buong Pilipinas ngayon? Many so-called pastors, they look at the ignorance of the society towards God at sa gayon ay tumalikot sila ng, sa salita ng Diyos. Pinunit nila ang kagandahan at katalisayan ng bride ni Kristo at upang maakit ang attention ng mundo, pinihis, binihisan nila ang iglesia at ipinarada siya sa harap ng isang makasalanang mundo. They have traded the simplicity of a worship service and they've turned it into a nightclub scene. They have removed the Bible from the pulpit and they begin to tell the congregation stories that are upon their hearts to entertain them rather than to teach them. And friends, may isang paraan lamang na ang mga makasalanan ay mapalapit sa Diyos. At iyon ay sa pamamagitan na mapagkumbabang pagsisisi at pananampalataya sa paanan ng cross. The only way to win the world for heaven is by the faithful declaration of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lovingly gave up himself for us as a sacrifice for sinners. Iyan ang tanging pag-asa natin bilang bride ni Cristo. And that is sadly the, the missing ingredient in many so-called churches today. They want to entertain the goats rather than to feed the sheep. Well, we've seen the selection, and we've seen the salvation, but thirdly, so verse 26, we speak about a process of sanctification. A process of sanctification. 
Narito ang layunin ng pagibig at sakripisyo ni Kristo para sa iglesia to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the words. Uh, in the time in which the Apostle Paul is writing in ancient Greece, uh, everybody would have known that a bride-to-be would be taken down to a river to be uh, ceremonially cleansed before the big day. Uh, whatever her life had been before, it was now being symbolically purified, and she would enter into the marriage without any blemish. It was a picture of essentially washing away the past. Well, sa mas malaking kahulugan, minahal ni Kristo ang kanyang bride, uh, ang, ang kanyang bride, ibinigay ang kanyang sarili para dito upang gawin ang, ang ano, verse 26, what does it say? That he might sanctify her. Or well, some versions say like here, that he might make her holy. I wonder if you're in the business of being holy today. Uh, many people, they're very concerned with being happy to the expense of being holy. I uh, say so it's, it's much more important to have my needs met more than my soul fed. Uh, I think of the story of a young girl. Uh, she was uh, converted. Kaya nag-apply siya para maging miembro sa isang Iglesia, at ang tanong ay tinanong sa kanyang interview, uh, nani, naniniwala ka ba na dati kang makasalanan? O, oh, sagot niya. At naniniwala ka pa rin ba na ikaw ay isang makasalanan? And much to the, the pastor's surprise, sinabi niya, uh, para sabihin sa inyo ang totoo, pakiramdam ko ay mas makasalanan ako kaysa dati. Ngunit may pagpabagong hindi ko lubos na maipaliwanag. All I know is that dahil kay Jesus, dati akong makasalanan na tumatak po sa kasalanan, pero ngayon, isa na akong makasalanan na tumatakas sa kasalanan. In other words, I used to run for my sin. I used to run towards my sin. I used to do everything in order to get what I wanted. But now, because of the, the grace and the love of Jesus Christ, I now want to run as far as I can from my sin. And mga kaibigan, iyon ang pakakaiba. As Christ saves us, He also begins the process of sanctifying us, which shows itself in a life that no longer wants to pursue the pleasures of sin, but is constantly trying to flee from the presence of sin. And as Paul details for us, details of verse 26, na ginagawang banal ni Cristo ang kanyang bride. You see, Christ has paid such a price to remove the sins of the church, slightest bit of moral impurity within it. Jesus is not satisfied until his church is made perfect. He will not stop in this process of sanctification until we have been conformed to his perfect image. Christ loves the church, that he gave himself up for the church, that he might make them holy. Sapagat ang iglesia ay set apart sa mundong ito, ay gayon pa man ito ay nasa mundo pa rin. And therefore, it must continuously be cleansed by Christ. I uh, was saying to my boys the other day, I said, boys, you need to go and get a shower before you go to bed. To which my boy said, Daddy, we had a shower yesterday, and last week, and the week before. You're making a shower every day. That's unfair. <laughs> and I said to the boys, go and look in the mirror, and look at your face. Look down at your hands. You're dirty. Look at your feet. They're black. You need to shower every day. So that you don't come to Grace Plant and people start saying, showering daily. All right, maybe some of you need to hear that message today. 
but more so when it comes to the spiritual reality, we need that constant daily cleansing and washing by the Word of God. Impossible ng hindi tayo mahawa paminsan-minsan dahil sa ating paligid. And therefore, kung paano ang personal na, na sanctifi- sanctification ay isang kinakailangan proseso, kaya may pangangailangan para sa sama-samang sanctification sa loob ng iglesia. Bawat linggo, kailangan nating maging disiplinado. And so you don't just say, well, I, I didn't I come to church last week? Do I need to go every week? And the answer is a resounding yes. Why? Because we live in a fallen world. We live in fallen bodies. We're constantly being contaminated by the presence of the sin that is around us. Yes, we have been converted by Christ once and for all. The the sin has been removed from our account and placed upon the cross of Christ. And yet you know, don't you? That though you are a sinner saved by grace, you still fall into sin. There is that remaining reality and presence of sin that does not necessarily mean that you are not a Christian, but means that you are a struggler in this world. We believe in the now, but not yet. You are now justified, but you are not yet glorified. You have been made perfect in the sight of God the Father, but there is this daily need for the cleansing of the Lord Jesus Christ in our souls. Amen? Don't we need this daily cleansing? Don't we need the presence of Jesus Christ within us to to wash us by His Word? Because how often do we fail and fall? Uh, We talked recently about the subject of church discipline. It was a hard subject to uh, work through together. And we said that not all church discipline is negative. In fact, you know church discipline is negative. It's always to serve a purpose. But there are two kinds of church discipline. Do you remember the difference? There is the corrective discipline. That means when somebody has fallen really badly into sin, we need to put them out of the church for a period of time so that they might repent and be restored. But then there is this other kind of discipline that every single one of us needs every day of our lives. It's called formative discipline. In fact, right now, as I open up the Word of God with you, I'm disciplining you and I'm disciplining myself by the Word of God. We all need this discipline because we are all in the process of sanctification. We are not the finished article. Nakikita mo ba iyon in the verse 26? To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the through the words, the Word of God, ang banal na salita ng Diyos, ang aklat na ito, ang Biblia, ay ang agent ng ating sanctification. What is the instrument that God uses in 2024 to sanctify and purify and cleanse His church? Well, it's right here. It's God's Word, the Bible. At iyan ang dahilan kung bakit ang simbahang ito ay may napakataas na pananaw sa kasulatan ng Diyos dahil wala kundi ang dugo ni Jesus na ipinahayag sa atin sa salita ng Diyos na makapaglilinis, makapaglilinis sa atin mga, mga kasalanan. At walang iba kundi ang regular na pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos ang maghuhuga sa atin from the filth and the dirt that we have accumulated by living in this fallen world. You see, hindi ka lang isang beses lumapit kay Kristo. Ngunit kailangan mo ang patuloy na paghuhugas Jesus, the bridegroom, is perfecting his church, the bride, but the work is far from complete, isn't it? Any perfect Christians here today, please make yourself known to me after the service. I would love to shake your hand and congratulate you. But I don't think anybody will be saying to me that after this service. Why? Because you know the truth. You see your life. You see the, the, the reality of that hymn, prone to wonder, prone, I, uh, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. You and I, we're constantly wandering away from the Word, and we need 
to be brought back under this gospel. You never graduate from the gospel. You never get to a point in your life where you have nailed it, you've achieved it, you've accomplished it. Every single one of us today, we say, don't we, we're all in this together. We all need the work to be completed in our hearts. At kaya ano ang ibig sabihin nito para sa atin ngayon? Ang ibig sabihin nito na kailangan mong maging matiyaga sa proseso. Para sa iyong sarili ng personal. At kailangan mong maging matiyaga sa pagunlad para sa iglesia ng sama-sama for the church corporately, congregationally. But sad to say, nakakulungkod, marami sa ating panahon ang nakonvince na maaari silang makaroon ng ng kaugnayan kay Jesus pero wala silang kaugnayan sa kanyang iglesia. Marami ngayon ang madaling lumipat from one church to the other. We sometimes call it church hopping. They go to a church for three months and then they say, well, I think I've heard enough from there. I've seen enough ugliness in that place. I'm going to go to the next church. And they go there for three months and then they go to the next church and so on. Many people jump from one church to another. Hindi nauunawaan na ang iglesia ay unti-unting ginagawang banal ni Kristo at therefore ang iglesia ay minsan ay magiging isang masakit na lugar. The church is not always a happy place to be. And it's sad to say. And you, some of you know that, I know that, from raw experience, that sometimes the church hurts more than the world. And why is that? Well, it is because the church ay hindi museum para sa maganda, unit hospital para sa mga sira. This side of heaven, we will all fail to live up to the high calling of holy living. And so, labanan natin ang tukso ng pagsasalita ng critical o hinihingi ang pagiging perfecto Lahat tayo ngayong gabi ay nasa proseso ng sanctification. And so be patient with your brothers and sisters. If they are not where you are spiritually, then remember that you are not where you should be spiritually. Uh, C.H. Spurgeon once said this, he says, The church is not perfect, but woe to the man who finds pleasure in pointing out her imperfections. Christ loved his church, and we must do the same. Mga kaibigan, maraming tao ang nagsasabihing mahal na nila si Kristo, pero they hate the church. They, they love the teachings of Christ, they say, but they do not love the church that Christ came to initiate. Marahil ay nakaraon sila ng masasamang karanasan, mga traumatic nangyari at Sama katuwid ay tumanggi silang pumasok bilang mga miyembro or even just to attend. And yet I want to say to you today, if, if, if you are holding back from committing to a local church, do not do so on the basis of the imperfections of the current applying members. When you look around and you say, yeah, but they're not who they should be. And this church is not as it should be. Do not let that hold you back. Because ultimately, you are not a perfect person yourself. And if you are perfect, then you ought not to be associating among us. Because churches are hospitals for broken people. And yet, what do we find here? Kung paanong pinatawa tayo ni Cristo, dapat tayong magmadaling magpatawad sa ating mga kapatid. If Christ is patiently sanctifying us, then may we be patiently sanctif- may we be patient as he sanctifies others. Maniniwala ka bang mahal ng isang lalaki ang kanyang asawa kung tumanggi siyang makitang kasama siya? Hindi, di ba? You, you would not believe his profession of love. Kung gayon, bakit tayo maniniwala sa isang tao na nagsasabihing mahal nila si Kristo, ngunit tumanggi na makitang kasama ng kanyang bride? And so we've seen tonight about the work of Christ in selection 
His work in salvation. His work in salvation. But I want to finish by looking up. Because, for, because fourthly and finally, look at verse 27. It describes for us a perfect celebration. A perfect celebration. Now we move ourselves away from this world that is dominated by time and space, and we go to the realm of eternity. And it says here that Jesus presents her to himself as a radiant church, without stain, wrinkle, or any blemish, but holy and blameless. I remember when I got married, I was just 20 years old. Some of you were still living at home at the age of 20, and some of you had barely experienced much of life. Well, same here. But there we were, we got married at such a young age, and I remember I said to my wife, darling, we're, we're going to not just grow old together, but we're also going to grow up together. And the reality of the Christian life is just the same, isn't it? Now, not only are we growing old, but we're also growing up together. We're daily looking in the mirror. And as some of you know this, you look in the mirror and you say, what are all these wrinkles? Well, what are these imperfections? I don't remember myself looking like that. And sometimes people say, I, I don't even recognize myself when I look in the mirror. Because the reality of life is we all get older. And some of the celebrities who try so hard to prevent the external signs of aging, I think ironically, they look older than the average person their own age. With all that plastic surgery, I mean, they look even worse than if they just left it off. That's an aside, but the reality is true in the Christian life. Let us not be hiding the imperfections, but let us be honest and transparent about who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in this process of sanctification so that one day we might get to heaven and there will be a perfect celebration. I recently heard the story of a blind man and his name was William Dyke at habang siya ay nasa school, uh, nakilala niya ang isang magandang babae. And though he had never seen her with his physical eyes, he fell in love with the beauty of her soul. And he proposed and asked her to marry him. And shortly before the wedding, uh, William agreed to have eye surgery that might restore his sight. And the doctors operated on this man and they bandaged up his eyes until the wedding day. And William requested that the bandages only be removed from his eyes during the ceremony, just when the bride made her way down the center aisle. And this is a true story. As the music began to play and the bride came down the aisle, William's father began to remove the bandages from his son's eyes. And when the last bandage was removed, light flooded into William's eyes, and the very first thing he ever saw was the face of his radiant, beautiful, precious bride. And overcome with a sense of emotion, William whispered in his bride's ear, you are more beautiful than I ever imagined. Mas maganda ka pa sa inaakala ko. Mga kaibigan, on a far greater scale. Ito ang magiging karanasan ng bawat tunay na mananampalataya pagtatin natin sa langit. Ang mga bandages, as it were, ay aalisin sa ating mga mata at makikita natin si Heso Kristo. Ang kamatayan para sa Kristiyano ay ang ating pintuan sa kanyang silid ng trono upang makita ang magandang muka ng ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas at ang bridegroom si Heso Kristo. The one who, who died upon the cross to remove our sin. He will be the central focus of all of eternity. There will be this wedding procession. And the celebration will not last for just one week or two weeks, but for all eternity. We will be with Christ. We will behold his glory. And as we have seen in this final verse, 
These individual members of the church, under the preaching of the word, are being joyfully baptized, symbolizing the full washing from sin. And as they begin to be increasingly disciplined, as they come under the sound of the word, the picture now switches to the return of the King, the Lord Jesus Christ, when this washed and this beautified church is presented by Christ to Christ in absolute perfection. Do you see this? Uh, on a wedding day, I think my wife would have been absolutely mortified if I said to her, darling, can I do your makeup for the wedding? Can I do your hair for the wedding? Uh, she would have come in looking like Godzilla or something. You know, this is, this is not what a bride wants her husband to do on the biggest day of her life. She either wants to do it herself or she wants a, a, a lady who knows her or someone who, uh, who is a specialist to, to beautify her for the day. But what do we see here? Well, we see the Lord Jesus Christ completing the process of presenting the bride to himself. He's not just a beautician, but when you look at the state of your soul by nature, you would say he's a more of a surgeon, isn't he? He's not just doing a few little touch-ups, but he's doing some radical face reconstruction. He's making you totally what you are not by nature. And we learn here in Ephesians 5, 27, that one day the process will be complete and the celebrations will begin. He will finish what he started. He will not abandon the project that he has begun within the church. We read that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 when the apostle Paul says I'm sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion day I remember sorry to keep using my example but I remember when I got engaged we had a six month engagement I said I'm bliss why why such a short engagement and I said because I just can't wait that long we we, we just want to get married as quick as possible and the reality is that when it comes to the church of Christ, we say along with the writer in Revelation, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. We long for his appearing when he will complete process of sanctification once and for all time, when he will glorify this body of sin so that we might be made perfect in the sight of God the Father. That wedding day is coming. You are betrothed to Christ right now. It's a binding agreement. He will not let you fall away from the faith. But friends, what a greater day it will be when we all see Jesus and will sing and shout the victory. A wrinkle or a spot is a sign of perhaps a age or even maybe disease. And many people, they spend a whole fortune, don't they, trying to get rid of spots and wrinkles. But we're told here that Christ himself is going to present his church without a single spot or wrinkle to his Father in heaven. The Lord Jesus knows what we're like by nature. He knows that we're a church that is imperfect. And yet, he will not give up. And friends, I want to encourage you this evening, as we have thought about the church being a branch connected to the true vine, as we've thought about the church being a body united in Christ of many members, as we thought of the church being a building, gradually being built up in the faith. So do not lose sight of this final intimate image of the bride of Christ. You and I, with all of our imperfections, one day coming into heaven for all eternity to sing hallelujah. What a savior. What an opportunity to be with the bridegroom. Well, now one old preacher said this. He said, it ought to be a daily disappointment when our Lord Jesus does not come. Instead of being, as I fear it is, a kind of conclusion that he will not come just yet. I wonder, are you, are you able to say today, come quickly, Lord Jesus? If that fills you with a sense of dread or a sense of nervousness, 
can I ask you to do one single, sim, simple thing? And that is to come before the words week by week, hear the gospel, see the Lord Jesus Christ, and put your trust in him, the perfect bridegroom, who will one day cleanse and perfectly finish the work in the, work, uh, in the lives of his bride. Now we see in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Now we live by faith, but one day we will live by sight. May God help us here in Grace Plant Santa Maria. As we look forward to that wonderful day ourselves of April the 20th, a much lesser day than the one that we've been speaking of, but a great day nonetheless. As we look forward to the covenanting of this local church, that God would remind us of the blessing of being a branch, a body, a building, and a bride. Amen.